Sharon doesn't know it, but I went through her purse while she was singing. <laughs> I'm not telling, then I'd have to give it back. This morning's message, light suit. Light suit, yeah, that has nothing to do with summer attire, you know, your white linen jacket or all that. Although I think I have one now. Glenda has bought me new clothes. <laughs> Although I found out that gray is not my color or whatever gray that was. <laughs> ah, the things that go on in the bachelor household. Well, anyhow, back to the message. Light suit. It, I don't know if you've, some of you may be all about creation all the time, thinking about it. I marvel at it, but I don't give it the full thought I guess I should, and the Lord brought this to my mind as he gave me this message some months ago, that um, I, I do think when God answers my prayers, I'm now on a different track now, I'm a different rabbit trail, I still, after all these years, am amazed at the instantaneous answer sometimes to the, the prayer I've just uttered. I usually use this example of when I was in Cuba. I was getting ready to go out the, the harbor into the actual rolling open ocean, which in my, at that point I was in my 50s, in my 50 previous years hadn't ended well when I went out into the ocean. But I was with a bunch of guys that I knew would never let me hear the end of it if I was feeding fish over the side. So I prayed to God, God, don't let me get seasick when we get outside this harbor. And expecting that I was going to then be able to be out there in those rolling seas and everything, my expectation I was going to be there, I was going to be all right, that, I thought that was going to be the answer to God's prayer. The answer to God's prayer at that moment was that my cell phone went off. I thought, this is kind of weird, but okay. We're not out in the rollers yet, so yeah, I guess the tower's not that far away. And it was the general on the line saying, you, boy, you got to get back here now. I was like, for real? You don't, the Coast Guard doesn't often take us on tours outside the bay. I got to get back. Yes, get back now. So I was like, oh, this is embarrassing. But I had to say, general on the line, we got to go back. Coast Guard turned the boat around and dropped me off. And as I was headed back, I thought, because I mean, like, I had no more than uttered that prayer and my phone rang. Instantaneous answer to that prayer. Different than I wanted, but God's like, man, aren't you picky? Your, po your point was you didn't want these guys to re be reminding you for the next five months about you feeding the fish. That was your prayer, and I answered it. I just use that as one example, but the list goes on and on about times where I've thrown a Hail Mary prayer out there, and it's been answered instantaneously. And then when I reflect on that, I think, well, is David Batchelor super special? Well, a little bit. I got Glenda for a wife. Yeah. But other than marrying above my station, there's nothing really that should make the creator and sustainer of the universe on my payroll. You know? I think, wow, he's awesome. He's doing this for seven billion other people right in this planet. Because as I've told you in other messages, the purpose of this planet is it's a salvation machine. Its only purpose is to bring and make a community for eternity to be around the throne of our God. And as soon as it accomplishes that purpose, it gets thrown away. It gets rolled up like an old set of dirty clothes, thrown into the fire. And I think, wow. God is very much focused on the occupants of planet Earth. Okay, so seven billion people. I have trouble keeping track of my staff. 
seven billion people, and then let's go further than that. You know, that's enough zeros. That's, that's an awesome set of zeros anyhow when you do the math. And then he says, there's not a hair on your head he hasn't counted. You know, so for some of us, that's more hair than others, and I'm not looking at JJ at the moment. <laughs> oh, oh, there he is. Okay, good. <laughs> so seven billions times that number. And then we look outside the human race, and he says that not even a sparrow falls from the sky, but that he knows it. Well, I think I'm so grateful he said sparrows and not greckles, because I would get so distracted by that, because greckles are my mortal enemy. I just absolutely hate them, and every morning when I go look at the car, think how much greckle stuff do I have to wash out of my car? But not even a Greco falls from the sky. And the Lord knows it. So seven billion follicles of hair, Greco's, and then every other species on the planet, even in the bottom of the ocean, in the Mariana Trench, God is sovereign over that. You know, we are now have Gabe in our house, right? You know. And Gabe loves planets. And UCA has filled his head with more planetary trivia than I can stand. <laughs> and he tests me on this all the time. I've learned more the names of moons about planets I didn't even know had moons. I've learned the true status of Pluto. All of these things, I tell you that to bring us back into the awesomeness of God and creation and this God with all these zeros over all the things that he has to keep track of. I mean, you could fill this sanctuary with the zeros if you think about the math of all the things he tracks. So when he revealed this verse in the Psalms to me, I kind of previous to that had been like, the, the song we sang, and I know that's why Tony chose the song, he wraps himself in light. And that's, that, that wording is good, does he wraps himself in light, but I, as I previously had understood that, it's like, is Travis already gone from the sanctuary? He probably already is. Kind of like when they play Capture the Flag with Kim lights, you know, Light is an accessory out there. You grab it, you wrap yourself in it. But no, God is saying something completely different in this psalm. You know, light is the speed, uh, speed limit for the universe. E equals mc squared, right? This is, this is the equation that set the nuclear age. All of the previous ages of the Babylonians and the Sumerians and Rome and the Greeks and, and the great empires of Europe and even the United States, the thing now, the, the age in which we live is E equals mc squared. Energy is equal to mass times the speed of light squared. We can't even get to the speed of light with all of our modern stuff and 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 it, you have to square it in order to understand the nuclear age. Top of my head goes Poo. God says, now the, the, what he actually said in the Psalms was, because wrapping yourself in light, and I'm, yeah, he wraps himself in light, and we're gonna hear a little bit of that in 1 John, but I, don't, I didn't have a big enough concept of, no, he wears it like a garment. It isn't something like you and I. If we were to try and wrap ourselves in light, we'd get Kim Light juice or whatever. You know, we'd get something and, and wear it like a light suit, like uh, I forget the name of that John Travolta movie where he has a, a suit all made out of, of light. But no, it's our God is so much outside this huge universe, this, all of these zeros that I've been talking about, the, all of the awesome things. And God's like... Let me take light, the very thing that human beings can't even replicate in any way, the thing that they, in all their modernity, 
and the understanding of this, that's just a servant of mine. I, man, I just put that on like a light suit. I mean, it's just so smaller than I am, and I'm, that, I just marvel at that. How big God is amongst all of these principles of, of the universe, of thermodynamics, and all of this stuff. And God's like, that's just like a hanky in my pocket. You know, I just, I thought, oh, that's actually good news. I mean, you say, oh, no, duh. But no, I mean, it's really good news because we live in times like right now, we're so worried, or maybe some of us are. Some of you all never turn on the news, and that's how you, you solve this problem. <laughs> but if you really reflect on the things that are happening now that have never happened before, or things that you're looking at and you're saying, how can that ever be resolved? It would be that darkness might creep into even your understanding. You might start hedging your Christianity, hedging your gospel, hedging your bets by saying that somehow that darkness is going to defeat God. That God is somehow surprised at that. But that's where 1 John then speaks into it and why almost every time John picks up a pen, you know, whether it's John 1 or 1 John 1, he goes immediately to Jesus as the light. And you know, even in John 1, where he says he's the life, and that life was the light. You get right back to light. You can't get away in your gospel if you don't get back to light. And the God who's like, light is big and I'm so much bigger I wear it like my clothes it's the stuff I put on when I wake up in the morning I put on light but it is so much smaller than I am and I said oh good and first John 1 says in God he's light and there is no darkness and then he turns to his children the church and says if you walk in darkness you're basically you, you're out of fellowship with God. You're, you're not where you need to be. <clears throat> Partly, you're out of fellowship with your other human beings. The more darkness we have in us, the harder it is to get along with other people. It's that simple. Get, you know, if, and and you, you find people that, that they, they pride themselves in dark. I did a funeral up at Fort Sam the other day, and there was, I, I actually thought goths were a thing of the past. No, no, there was a goth there. And I thought, I almost want to take a selfie with you. I thought you were a piece of history. But there are still people who are this darkness. And then, of course, God says, how can my children have any fellowship with that, with darkness? In me, there is no darkness. And as we, if we in any way entertain darkness, we don't have any fellowship with God. And then the very nature, it's, it's that last verse in 1 John 1, really struck me. It says, if we are in the light as he is in the light, we'll actually be able to get along with one. It doesn't say we'll be able to get along. There's, that verb tense isn't there. But it says, we will be in fellowship with one another. And then it's funny. Because you don't expect the blood and the light to be connected. But this light suit is, that's also where you get the blood suit. And the blood of Jesus Christ. If you are in the light as he is in the light, you have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus cleanses you from all iniquity. So church, my challenge to you is to put on your light suit. To realize God is so much bigger that for him, light is just one of the many little accessories in his wardrobe. But for us... It's absolutely the first thing we need to put on in the morning is this light suit because then we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all our iniquities. Let us pray. Come, O oh Lord, show us where we still walk in darkness. If there's any habit, any train of thought, any practice, any preference, that is dark. Take it from us. We lay it at the altar now. 
It's not to be part of us. You have declared that. Lord, we want to be totally consumed by the light. Overwhelm us. Invade us with light. We ask this in your mighty name, Jesus. Amen.